Welcome everyone to Tech Q and A. You've got questions, we've got guesses. Um, we are here to answer your technical related questions. If you have them, you can send those to requests at radiodeadair.com and we will attempt to help you with any tech related issues you might have. I'm Nat. I think I fucking everything tonight. Fucking everything's trying to make noise. That sounded like a semi. That was that's probably was I who the fuck knows. I'm Nash. I do Radio Dead Air, and for well over a decade, I worked in technology. I still work with tech. That's what I do. This is Mike, my producer. He does technology-related things as well. We'll be looking at your questions later on the show, but right now we are going to look at the news. Now, it's been a little dead since New Year's Eve in terms of tech stuff. Which is kind of understandable. Everyone puts out their big stuff right before Christmas, to try, or in the months leading up to Christmas to yeah. try to get sales. And this is their off time where they're trying to unload all the stock they didn't sell. So why announce new things now? So we th there's not a whole lot of stuff. However, CES did happen this past week, which is not so much the, the big tech show. It's uh, some technology stuff gets announced at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Um, do they still do the porn show right next door to the CES? I do have no idea that used to be a big thing it's in vegas and they would have a uh, it used to be black hat was right after ces too wasn't it yeah the consumer electronics shows most in fact for a while the porn was more was bigger than the consumer electronics show and then slowly it grew um it's a grower not a shower anyway um in in terms of uh that a little bit of stuff came out we'll talk about a few of those things in a little bit but um i did want to mention after a very long time just on a lark because i could i decided to upgrade to windows 10. how did you like that well it was i i just did this kind of as an experiment i didn't do a clean install which i oh, normally you, you did the in place install yep what i did was i backed up my current system i did an image of my uh smart move i did an image of of my os drive and then i did the upgrade and this is now much later it's after the anniversary update all of these things it was remarkably painless everything still worked I, I had a couple of settings I had to adjust because, well, things had changed a bit, but none of my applications failed to uh, open. I was able to render a video in Adobe Premiere, and I'm using an older version of Adobe Premiere, so it didn't have any trouble with Windows 10. The one hitch I did have was I forgot to uninstall window blinds and start eight. Remember start eight? Start eight was the application that would let you yeah. put a start button. I was using Windows 8. Um, I forgot to uninstall those. Obviously, play, the, yeah, the Windows 8 versions do not play well with Windows 10. You have to get the Windows 10 version. Right. I forgot to do that. And when Windows would start up, I would get a black screen with the mouse pointer. And that's it. It wouldn't go any further. And I was banging my head like, well, well this sucks. Fuck it. Oh, wait, this is my fault. So I, I had I had that after a window after the anniversary update. But that was Windows's fault. Well, but uh, what I did was I went into safe mode, which booted right up. I was able to get into safe mode, and I uninstalled the uh, Windows blinds and start eight, and then boom, I had Windows ten. And it's it's actually a I, to my perception, it's a wee bit faster, and everything is working. So yeah, I only had one problem after my crash and reinstall is that with the. Uh, in place install it, it converted all my software said okay yeah this works fine you don't need to reinstall everything well when, when i had to crash i had to reinstall everything and one of my piece one very small piece of software that i occasionally used said i don't recognize this windows os i'm not installing i just it's it's very unusual for an upgrade to be paid that's why most people tend to recommend installing clean versions of Windows. What we mean by clean is you wipe the drive, you start over. What that does is over the years, Windows builds up all sorts of registry entries and other DLLs and other files that are just clogging up the system. So normally it's a good idea to reinstall Windows occasionally, or at least it used to be. 
And that's why people would say, don't upgrade, do a clean install. I was just curious to see how this would work. And it's where, as you can see, since and just enough of a piece to try. Yeah, it's working fine. We're, we're all set. All my audio settings are fine. I even, I even found drivers for my uh, antique Sound Blaster X5, which I use for audio for the show and everything's cool. working. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised that we'll see how it holds up. But so far, I mean, I'm just like, neat. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that if anyone out there, since we are talking tech stuff, anyone there was, look at, look, Grady, just, Grady's just flopping back there <laughs> on the green screen. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Little, walking little, by, walking by, walking by, flop. Little fucking lord of everything. Look at you, you little shit. What's he destroyed lately? Um, nothing lately, fortunately. He keeps waking me the fuck up. He's he's getting blocked out of the bedroom tonight, so he keeps deciding, hey, I'm gonna jump on you and yell. So. Okay, Nash, I, I can predict what your next purchase is going to be then. Huh. You're gonna get the, you know that uh, open cell sort of foam they put around uh, heating pipes? Mm-hmm. You're gonna get some of that. You're gonna cut it so you can wedge it under your door Ideally, this is, of course, to keep heat in, but it's also going to keep kitty paws from going scrabble, 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 scrabble. Actually, door. my door my door is fairly flush with the carpet, fortunately okay. for me, so. What, 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 what do you want? A little goofball? He's, I, I swear, any second he's going to hop up here on, the, on, on my chair and scream in my ear, because he does that. All right. Enough talking about superfluous, ridiculous little shit. Let's talk technology. Um, one of the things that did premiere this week at CES that is notable is Intel has a new processor. Yeah. And it's in. It, it well, it's, it's more than just meh. It's it is so disappointing. The new iteration of Intel processors have come out. They're codenamed KB Lake. They include the Intel. 7700K, the uh, I think it's the 7650K. Uh, I, I'm it, keeping up with Windows with uh, Intel's product numbering is just there. yeah. I, 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 as I've said before, I swear they just they just get a Dart, a dartboard. They put random numbers on the dartboard because it's not normal numbers on a dartboard where it's one through twenty. Yeah, and they just start throw, throwing darts, and I, they go from there. And maybe it's a monkey throwing the darts. Who knows? Yeah, this, the, this, it's, it's, ugh. So what Intel used to do with their architectures, which was, was kind of neat and was useful for, for planning upgrades and planning things, was they used to have this thing called TikTok. Yeah. Where the, where the tick was a new process and talk was the new architecture. And they'd go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like, New process uh, would be 32 nanometer. And then the new architecture taking advantage of that new 32 nanometer. New process, 22 nanometer. And now... New architecture taking advantage of that. The it's trouble... Changed. Yeah, the trouble is now... Um, everything got louder for some damn reason. Why did that happen? Why are things happening? Things are happening, and I don't like it. I have adjusted nothing. I don't like it. Anyway, um, with the TikTok, it was it was a, tended to be a re relatively regular thing because we were still shrinking the, the transistors, adding more transistors to the processors, getting smaller and smaller. But then they started running into some issues. Mainly because mainly the big issue being physics. Yes, you can only get so small, and when you know it's, there's heat dissipation physics, uh, there's the fact that you've got to switch something that is getting smaller and smaller, and you start getting into really screwy things of well, did it actually move? Yeah, it's it's, and then you know putting the layers closer and closer together. You've got to go, well, I moved this thing here, but I moved this thing over here as well because it was too close. So what Intel did was in order to stretch things out and try to keep the money train rolling while they're 
fiddling out and working out smaller and smaller processes for transistors is they introduced a third phase of the TikTok, which was, it used to be process and then new architecture. Now it's process, architecture, optimization. Which I suppose we could call TikTok money. Yeah. Um, now I've got no problem with optimization. There's, there's nothing wrong with optimizing a system. And realistically, in any research and development hmm. process, you're going to go, hey, we come up with this new thing. And then someone, either by accident or playing around with it, or just set up solid, dedicated research on it after the fact, goes, you know, we did this thing this other way, it'd be better. Now, what we have are... Great. Seriously? It's going to be all fucking night. It's going to be back there. What, what we have now is bit of Intel has gotten complacent. Um, why, why the, the reviews on the 7700K pretty much show that it's not much, in fact, it's not any faster than the 6700K. Um, it's uh, well, barely they're promising, they're promising some performance boosts. But in the graphics department, not in the processor department. It's barely any better than hell. It's even barely, barely any better than the forty-seven seventy K, and that was that's yeah. a four-year-old processor now. Um, in in it's not the the big innovation that was added to this, however, was the addition of four K DRM. Yes. That's the big upgrade for KB Lake. If you want to watch Netflix in 4K on your PC, you have to get a KB Lake processor. Yeah, otherwise it won't decrypt. And the reason it won't decrypt is, of course, because they want to keep you from uh, copying it. Going, yeah. I've bought Netflix for a month. I've queued up everything. It's watching and downloading straight to my, my computer. The other, the I think, what was the other small thing that this one does now? There's, uh, there's some integrated graphics increases. They've got some battery life, it looks like, increases. Because this is primarily for a uh, laptop, isn't it? No, this is a desktop processor. The 7700K is a desktop processor. Why the hell are they talking about battery life? But uh, th this is... Uh, they've, un they've, they've changed some of the... Un uh, what you can... Uh, uh, overclock now they they changed that scheme a little bit oh and uh yeah the other big thing is the the one i don't know how this is a selling point but this is the first intel processor that is not compatible with earlier ver versions of windows this will this has no drivers for windows 8 windows 7 any previous versions it's well, not compatible i suppose the idea is that well I'll be honest. You know what my guess there is? Hmm. Microsoft paid them some money to say, don't make drivers. So it's a, it's a forced upgrade. You buy this, you have to have Windows 10. So all in all, this thing is kind of dead on arrival. Um, uh, it, it'll sell, I think, in office environments where they no it won't kind of no it won't no 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 office is buying a, an i7 700 7700k they're getting uh, i3s well no i agree your average office worker who yeah. is doing word and excel and it's and powerpoint is getting i3s maybe i5s if they got a, a dealer who mm. got them a massive deal the i7s is going to go to the engineers doing 3d cad and all sorts of wacky stuff that needs a lot of processing power and there aren't that many of them no that's who's going to get this and they'll be told you've got to get windows 10 now which will set up an entire upgrade cycle in their office because they'll have to upgrade everything to match windows 10 now but in general this is more than disappointing from intel this is just stagnation and it's this is bad the the only the only way i would say this is not bad is if the reason this has so little in it is because they pulled most of the R&D team to work on what's next, and what's next comes out to be phenomenal. If that happens, 
And well, that's no, why. That's not. But we don't know. That's not. See, that's not what's happening. Let's talk about no, that. No, I, I agree. It's not going to happen. AMD. That's the only way it, it would be it. AMD was Intel's main competition. I'm, I'm gonna, let me explain sure. the timeline here. Um, around 1999, there were little tiny companies that were making Intel compatible clone processors. Um, I'm trying. AMD was one of them. I'm trying to think of some of the names of the others. They've all vanished. They were making 486 compatibles and and 386 compatibles, and they were really eating Intel's lunch. Um, but the big one was AMD, and the reason they stood out was when they brought out their Athlon processor. Not only was it faster than what Intel was offering, not only was it a more robust processor, but it was a shitload cheaper too. Yeah. And that Cyrix, that was another one back Cyrix, in the day. I was just looking yeah. up Cyrix. Um, when AMD cre released the Athlon, that set off uh, that that set off modern yeah uh intel responded with uh clock speeds and that was that was the big the big battle everyone was raising the clock speeds on their processors even though with different architect architectures clock speed is relatively meaningless and yet they were still saying we have the faster clock speed um and, and really really what the clock speed changes did was screw up a number of games yeah because there were so many games in that period most of our, our audience, I don't think, will know this. No. That where the reaction of the game was tied to the clock speed. Uh, to the point where I picked up an old, uh, this is several years ago, I picked up an old game suite and I installed it and I went to play the game and it was, a, it was an RPG, sort of top down isometric view. And all the guys in the town are running around like madmen because their movements tied to clock speed. And then I look at the inst installed disk and there's a program on there. That you run before the game, and you give it a number, and that percentage cranks your clock down by, so that you can actually talk to people, so they don't run the hell off. So after the, the, the during the clock battles, um, AMD actually jumped the line on Intel, yeah, and created a 64-bit architecture that, for the first time ever, Intel had to copy something from AMD. And, well, and they added their own stuff. They did. Was, at that time, one of the other things that happened is AMD, when they put out their 64-bit uh, architecture, they put out their 64-bit instruction set. This is the, the command mm -hmm. the processor uses to do things. Most of their commands were just upgraded versions of 32-bit commands, but there were several 64-bit specific ones. So Intel copied a few of them and then made a whole bunch of their own. And the reason I'm bringing all this up is Intel was actually kind of in trouble because they were in a fight. They were in a dog fight. Yeah. And what really turned it around for Intel was being forced to go past what we knew about computers and processors at the time. And that's what resulted in the core architecture, which has been the basis of everything Intel has built up until today which the idea was instead of building a CPU with one brain in it, we'll build a CPU with two brains in the same system. And then we'll put four in there, and then we'll put eight in there, and then we'll put 12 and 16 in there. And that was how things moved to the next level. It yeah. wasn't... What, this, it, this led to another problem, of course, that a lot of people didn't know how to program yeah. to handle those. However... It, teething it, issues. It was a matter of... Being in that position forced Intel to come up with something innovative, to do something in a new way. They they moved past clock speed. They moved that which is the only metric they were measuring anything by. Oh yeah. And they shifted over into building something new. And which that, is good. And since AMD completely tripped, fell, and shat themselves with the steamroller and whatnot, Intel has just coasted. They've set high prices. They don't offer very much value for what they do produce. But who else are you going to purchase from? You have, I mean, if you, AMD has nothing yet that competes with Intel. Now, AMD did show some stuff recently with the new Ryzen processors. They're going to be 
releasing that do show them even at a much slower speed at a much slower setting to be able to perform more work and be faster and more competitive than a much more powerful intel processor yeah and it's 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 it's, it's looking neat and if they keep the costs uh, low enough yeah uh then they'll 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 certainly start peeling people off of of intel again i'm hoping what this is going to result in because we've been so so focused in not just uh cpus but also in graphics been so fo focused on shrinking the process to get more transistors on a die as the only way forward that we have that the computer manufacturers have failed to attempt to do anything new and different and progressive yeah and i guarantee you there's some guy or some team in Intel's office that goes, hey, why don't we do this? No, no, we're shrinking the dice. That's what we're doing. And those are the guys that I think, if they haven't jumped ship to AMD, or just gone, screw it, I'm out of here, I'll go do something else, um, that, AMD, or that Intel is going to have to pick up and go, okay, what were your ideas? Yeah, it's, it's at this point, and we need it because, God, if the prices on... I, I looked into it. I've looked into it. And the processor I have now, the 4930K, I purchased it four years ago. And it is just about as fast as its same current brand new model replacement. The 60, I think it's the 6850 or 6830K. 6850K. It's about the same speed. It offers really nothing. So we need something big. Because right now, this is not good. This is very bad. Uh, let's. I don't. I don't disagree. Let, and maybe we'll, if Ryzen takes off, then we'll, uh, and actually, you know, picks up market share. We'll see. We'll see some changes at Intel. Let's let's speak about some more. This is very bad, and some shit has to change. Um, D Link is uh in the news you, you may be familiar with d-link if you've ever walked into a best buy on a, a stack of d-link it's like it's like a it's like a pyramid of d-link devices like little chocolate candies you see in a grocery store and they're everywhere and you've heard nash and me talk nash and i talk about them before and in general we say they're kind of well crap D-Link is the brand you buy when, oh shit, something's broken and it would take too long to get something from Amazon. That's yeah. when you buy D-Link. You go into Best Buy and you buy a D-Link. Well, D-Link, D-Link, like, uh, I forget the name of the printer brain. It's basically your college student's first router. Lexmark. That's the one. <laughs> I just, I, you didn't even have to tell me. I knew it off the, anyway. Um, it's cheap and it's shit. The FTC is, Sorry, is. The FTC has put in a complaint uh, regarding D-Link failing to take reasonable steps to secure its products, putting the privacy of citizens everywhere at risk. As a result, hackers are increasingly targeting consumer routers and IP cameras. Consequences for consumers can include devices compromised and exposures of sensitive personal material. What? Now, what? Why this is important? You may think. Well, they've gotten to my camera. So what? Well. It depends on how your camera communicates with things. Your camera may have, when you set it up, say, credentials to your computer so it can save video or when someone rings your doorbell. Even just the fact that it's connected to your network is a way in. Yes. Any device connected to your network that's not secured is a way in to every other device on your network. Yes. That's how networks work. Yeah. Now, the other devices in your network might have protections on them, but it's in, it basically, you've got multiple boundaries. It got inside one. The call is coming from inside the house. Yes, exactly. Now, the, uh, the interesting, before we continue, uh, I, I, I actually looked at a different article on this earlier this week. One of the companies that uh, reported on this, uh, the, uh, as an Internet of Things security company, was called Sanrio. And I, I was not awake when I read the story, and I thought, Sanrio? When did Hello Kitty get into Internet of Things security? Funny. Yeah. But it, the, the, the issue here is, for example, this is the kind of thing that D-Link did, hard-coded passwords, things you can't change. <sighs> so 
if I'm a bad guy, I go, hmm, I'd like to get into these D-Link devices. Let me buy one of my own to investigate it. There's a hard-coded password here. I've just gotten to all of them. I don't need to do any work. That is like selling lock. That's like selling padlocks. And the same key that, that comes with every padlock will work with every other padlock. Like your luggage padlocks. Um, they also have security keys for the routers that are supposed to be secret and kept by D-Link. Those leaked. Yeah. So... The, and they didn't revoke them. No, they should have. That's they didn't, they didn't send thing out to a, do. an update saying, uh, we've, 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 here's an update, emergency update for your router. Please apply. Nope. Now, now why this is rel relevant, the fact that the FTC is starting to get involved in these things is you've been hearing about the big denial of service attacks that brought down the whole chunks of the internet and knock things offline and they're huge. This is where they start from. Yeah. Badly secured consumer devices are where they make botnets and botnets make DDoSs. This is how hackers are causing all of this mayhem. And you, and you may think, well, it's just, it's just an IP camera. How is it doing this? All it has to do is have a, a crafted thing in there that says, goes to Amazon, say, and says, hey, Amazon, how's it going? And now you've got 10 million of these hitting Amazon all at once going, yeah. hey, Amazon, how's it going? That's a little bit more than Amazon may be able to handle. It's, when I say 10 million, my number may be low. Yeah, it's, it's important that this is, is happening because the FTC, by taking this move, is showing an interest in how in these consumer devices. And we're going to need more of that as more and more things get placed online especially since we can't count on the FCC to do their shit. And uh, you should have seen some of the stuff. This The CES show was a collection of stuff that should not be put online, but is being put online. LG has said every new appliance they're releasing is going to have Wi-Fi capability. And which is why I won't be buying any LG products anytime soon. Why the fuck does your washing machine, the washing machine can tweet now. I'm not kidding. LG washing machine can tweet and tell you when your laundry is done. Well, you know that I can I can see where a, a, a message to you could be helpful because I admit I've been at my computer some days going, I'm really into World of Warcraft today. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. I forgot I finished my laundry. I I just it's, I, know, I, I agree. It doesn't need to be there there, you know, because I'll be honest, now I'll be honest, I've never seen, say, an LG washing machine in a um, apartment complex environment. It's all been personal washing machines. So I wouldn't mind necessarily in an apartment complex thing where it goes, hey dude, in, in 9D, your wash is done. I, I, Someone I, stole your jeans. There's a Wi-Fi bikini that was, that was premiered at CES. There's, there's a Wi-Fi bikini and there were also radiation shielding underwear to protect your gonads from cell phone radiation. Okay, so I, I don't know if you, you saw something I posted on Facebook. It was a bamboo mouse, you know, bamboo green mm -hmm. button mouse. One of the item, one of the propon uh, uh, selling points on it was. Radiation blocking. People will put taglines on things that they don't belong on. I reported it to Amazon saying, what the hell is it blocking? It was a wireless mouse, too. It was a wireless radiation blocking mouse. Should fucking work, because what's wireless? It's radiation. It's not dangerous radiation. Well, it's true. It's just stupid. Yeah. Um, but uh, so going back to D-Link here, the list of things that the FTC cites in their complaints, non-removable default passwords, which we've mm -hmm. already ragged on, command injection flaws. This is so someone could go, hey, uh, router, run this command without having any uh, yep. credentials or authority on there. They could say, hey, run this. Now do this. Now unlock the firewall. Let me on in. Uh, leaked security keys, which we talked about. and 
the use of plain text password storage on its mobile app. So you have a mobile app from your your, your D Link thing that says, "Hey, I'm gonna." Uh, you can talk to your 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 camera, so you can look on on your phone and see what your camera is seeing. Fine, I, I'm fine with that. That's good. That's a useful app. I can see that being useful. Stores the password on your phone. Unencrypted. So, unencrypted plain text. Which means That's if bad. anyone can access, anyone hacks into it, instead of seeing your password as gibberish, they'll see your password. If they have that password, and if you reuse passwords, you're fucked. And it's not, and it's not just that they have to hack into your phone or pick up your phone. If they manage to convince you to download another app, mm -hmm. that then can go through. If it's encrypted, all they've got is the encryption. They don't know right. how it was encrypted. But they can go, oh, his password is password. Ta-da! Which, I'll be honest, it's D-Link. I don't expect them to have strong password filtering. <laughs> You'll probably be able to use 12345 as your password. Yeah. You know, I, I honestly wish we had a little bit wider audience so that we could get an angry message from D-Link saying, no, no, we do use password filtering. Oh well, congratulations, congratulations! You got one thing right out of five. Finally tonight, another little wonderful moment from the Internet of Shit. Um, this this one's amazing. This, I love this story. This I, this I was hard to debate whether this was going on. What the fuck is wrong with you or on tech? But I I, I decided on tech. Um, everyone is putting out these little talk to you personal assistants that you, you yes. talk to and it does things for you. Like Microsoft has Cortana, Google has the Google Assistant, and of course, Amazon kicked it all off with Alexa. And there's that Japanese one that has the holographic little girl. Yeah, that one's just not right. That's but, a little creepy. Yeah. Um, well, here's how Alexa works. You say Alexa and Alexa listens for the next 60 seconds. It listens to what you say. Every time it hears anyone say Alexa. And then it does stuff. Yeah. Anyone. Say, Alexa, call Bob. And, and if you only have one Bob in your phone book, it will call Bob. I'm assuming. I don't know if it can actually call people. And it works if anyone, not just you, if anyone says anything to Alexa, Alexa will do it. Including Why people on the TV. And by the way, if you're listening to this show now, and you have an Alexa, Alexa has been triggered. <laughs> saying Alexa, Alexa, order pizza. I got one of you. Uh, Someone watching this has just been got. What happened was during a news report, someone was talking about uh, Alexa ordered me the dollhouse. Now, because Alexa was shit, and this is. God damn, Amazon. Why did you do this? Alexa is shipped by default to be able to purchase stuff on a verbal command. Yeah. That seems like... It's because it's from Amazon. <sighs> and they're a store. And it's a very bad idea to allow anyone to, to say... Because right now, those of you watching at home, Alexa, buy condoms. Alexa, buy lube. Alexa, buy more lube. Alexa, buy ball gags. Alexa, buy Alexa, buy a kit mask. We're having a lot of fun, right? But this is this is such. Who the fuck thought did not think this through? This is a fairly obvious thing. Because shit, you could just walk into someone's house, notice they have an Alexa, and be like, Alexa, buy chickens. Alexa. Buy a car. Well, maybe they would, well, it would probably send you a Hot Wheels car or something. Because it, 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 what they needed to have here was either that turned off by default, which wouldn't help a lot of people because they'd be going, oh, yeah, I need to turn this on. Um, or have it do enough voice recognition that you can say, register certain voices with it. And they're the only ones allowed to order. Yeah. So you can register mom and dad. But not the thirteen-year-old. This is this is a problem. Or especially, especially the six-year-old. Because once the six-year-old learns how to do something, six-year-olds are awful. They'll go. I, I want cotton candy. Th this is a problem, kind of across the Internet of Things marketing mindset. They come up with this neato idea to do this weird little thing, 
and do not stop to think through the forward implications yeah. of those things. And yeah. we're and this is why the FTC is going to have to start getting more involved because we're going to see more and more problems as people say, I think you should be able to set a fire across the internet by pushing a button and a house explodes and someone will go, okay, that's a great idea. Why don't we do that? Because a house is on fire. Well, yeah, yeah but we can though. We can push the button and it's neat. No. Now, Alexa does have a confirmation code that you can set so that it won't order stuff without you providing the confirmation code. But, but you have to that aren't going to do that because it's inconvenient until someone comes over and says, Alexa, order brownie mix and clown porn. <laughs> uh, that's a little bit of a deep cut there, Mike. Going back a little ways with that one. Um, yeah, now, the, not that part. Now, the other thing here is Amazon has said any accidental physical orders can be returned for free. So if, if you if someone show if you know someone gets brownie mix and clown porn at their house now, they can return it for free. But what this doesn't say is anything about accidental virtual orders. Because Amazon mm -hmm. also has video services mm -hmm. and they have an app store. So if you order somehow an app. Or, for example, if you were to say, Alexa, order season one of The Wire. Well, you probably have to tell it to order it on Prime. Alexa, order season one of The Wire on Prime. There you go. So, that, you might not be able to get a refund. Nope, you might not. I'm causing problems. I'm causing problems. I'm liking it. Ah, uh, all right. Well, yeah, that, that's, that, that's the news. And and after the show, I'll, I'll send you a link for uh, something you can use for what the fuck is wrong with you of a similar vein. Yay. That's good. All right. Uh, that's been that's the news. Now it's time to answer your questions. We've got plenty of them. If you guys want to add to our growing list of questions, send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. We will attempt to get those on for you and see what we can do about helping you with tech issues. We have a lot of computer building questions this week. Yeah, I noticed that. I don't know why. Maybe it's just it's after Christmas. Everybody's got their Christmas money and they want to go build stuff. Um, let's start with the one from Matthew. Let's start with Matthews because I want to talk to talk about this one a little bit. Um, he says, yeah, I'm looking at building my first computer and I've been warned against a twin video card setup. I always thought the twin video cards was only the way to go about having a multiple monitor set up. My friend's been warning me not to go with the dual video card and said go for a single more powerful card. Um, computer will be used for gaming and video editing. What do you guys think? I'm not a hardcore PC gamer, just looking to run a few games. Would going with the twin 1050s be all right or should I set it up with the 1070 card? Thanks for your time. What Matthew's talking about here is, you may have heard these terms before in, in uh, computer gaming, either Crossfire or SLI. They both mean the same thing. One is AMD's brand of it, and the other is NVIDIA's brand of it. Yeah, and what it is is putting two or sometimes more uh, video cards into a computer, and they have a special then connector mm -hmm. between them. And the idea is that they share the work. Yeah. Now, it may, it, it, it's, not, it's not so simple as one of them is drawing the left hand of the screen and the other one's drawing the right half of the screen. Uh, it could be one of them is handling uh, reflections and one of them is doing mm -hmm. anti-aliasing or you know, all sorts of things. Yeah, it's... It could be just one is handling every even line, one is handling every odd line. The idea is to, to make it so you have more power yeah. to do stuff. And, and the idea was uh, what you could do instead of spending a whole bunch of money on an expensive card, you could say get a slightly cheaper card and then later on plug in another of the same model of that card and you know save yourself you know money or just be able to upgrade as you go. Yeah. Um, now there's a problem <clears throat> with this beyond what we're, we're Oh there's several problems. Details. There's several problems. Beyond, beyond the technical details we're going to get into the the problem with I buy a slightly cheaper card and then buy another card of the same model is sometimes finding that new second card mm -hmm. of the same model. 
because video cards cycle through production pretty quickly. That's the first hitch with SLI and yeah, with, with Crossfire. Be, they have to be the same. They have to be the same make, same manufacturer, same model. They have to be identical cards. Otherwise, they have, uh, I think there are some hacks to make it work, but regardless, there you have to hack it to make it work. Yeah, it's, it's not something the casual user can do. Right. Now, of course, if you had the money to buy two at once and hook it up that way, you, you ignore, excuse me, you get past that hurdle. But then there's mm -hmm. the technical hurdles of most games are uh, built to handle one video card, whether it's the mm -hmm. online video uh, graphics package on the motherboard or an installed card, the programmers who wrote the game expected one card there. They don't yeah. expect to split the work up between two, and so they didn't program to inherently take advantage of that. And a lot of games that make use of SLI or Crossfire have been reported to have glitches. Sometimes they lock up for a few seconds and your frame rate just drops or they crash or they have other issues. So not a lot of games. I noticed a lot of people said The Witcher 3 had issues with SLI. The, the, if the idea is to get better gaming performance, SLI in a lot of cases tends to work against you because some games just aren't coded for it properly. Yeah, and now, and, and as, as we said uh, earlier in the processor discussion, we were talking about multiple cores and multiple threads. Mm -hmm. Initially, programmers weren't like taking advantage of this. So you'd have, with your processors, you'd have, say, an eight, eight, eight core system. One Core one would be doing all sorts of stuff, and cores two through seven, or two through eight would be doing next to nothing because they hadn't been programmed. It's the same way with SLI. And the next... The first, first graphics card will be doing a lot, and the second graphics card will be sitting there kind of twiddling its thumbs. Then uh, there's also a problem with uh, RAM. Um, this, this is a little weird... I don't know if they fixed this or not, but you're only using the video RAM on one of those cards. It doesn't use the RAM of both cards. Which is odd, but... So you're the not... The connector cable between the two is doing is it's providing access path for the second card to get to the first one's RAM. But yeah, so you're not getting... You're not doubling your video RAM. You're still using the same amount of video RAM. You're just getting another processor. So it's not really that big of a savings. And finally, the biggest downside of using multiple video cards is power. Yes. Because you're doubling the demands uh, on your power supply for that video card, for video cards. And you're doubling your cooling needs on video cards. Yep. Your, your computer is going to get hotter faster because it's got multiple video cards in it so in that case we never we generally say go with one go with the i, I wouldn't necessarily say go with the best you can afford because you know it is a balancing act when mm -hmm. you're building a new computer i would say go, go go with certainly the best you can afford and still keep the capabilities other capabilities you absolutely need honestly if you're in a position to start looking to get sli video cards or crossfire video cards just get get the the more powerful card really yeah. I mean, so in this case, I'd say, yeah, get the 1070. And even I want to point out the last thing um, you wanted to SLI with a 1050. You can't. This is something NVIDIA has actually started phasing out. Uh, yeah. you, the, 10, the GTX 1050 and 1060 actually aren't compatible with SLI. Only the 1070 and the 1080. And even then, used to be you could put as many as four cards together. Now you're limited to two. Three, if you actually contact NVIDIA and get special permission and an access uh, key to do it. You're limited to two these days. Yeah. NVIDIA... It's probably because it's just too much of a hassle for them to keep up with. Yeah, even, even the manufacturers, it was a neat idea, but its time is kind of... Especially considering how powerful the GTX 1080 already is. Yeah, and... And going back to something I said earlier, if it had been something that had taken off and it had huge advantages, mm -hmm. we'd probably all be doing it, and it everything would be programmed now. There'd be massive programming libraries to take advantage of it. Right. The fact that there people aren't taking advantage of it, it's because no one really. Wanted. Yeah. It doesn't. It, it was a neat idea. It, it, it was bragging rights, is what right. it was. It was a neat idea, but it never really took off. 
at least for gaming. Now, there are some valid uses for having multiple graphics processors wired together when we're talking about building things like uh, special servers. It, it's used a hell of a lot in bit mining, um, also in password cracking. That's, yeah. yeah, but... And I think I think that's why uh, they have the, the, the contact them for the connection. Yeah. Them, is so they can go, <clears throat> well, this guy, okay, he seems like he's not super hacker trying to crack passwords. Yeah. So in general, what it comes down to is if you're looking for a new graphics card for your computer, don't fall into the SLI trap. It's it's yeah. not going to help you in the long run. Either get what you can afford now and save up to get a better card later, or just get the good card to begin with. Don't go, because the downsides are, are, are many and the upsides are few. There's not yeah. really, yeah. Now, looking over the rest of the specs of what you got here, it looks pretty pretty decent. Yeah. Um, Western Digital Blue is okay. I've had some issues with their Western Digital yeah. Green. Don't get the... Green is their, their product line that's supposed to be power-friendly and yeah. things like that. And what it indicates there is it shuts itself off when it thinks it's not going to be needed. But, yeah, the blue line is, is pretty decent. Anyway, um, let's look at uh, Abstruse has a quick and, and simple question for us. Is there a real advantage to mechanical keyboards and or gaming mice, or is it all marketing? Um, yes and no. Yeah, it's always one of those yes and no ones. Okay, so for let me speak to the, the gaming mice. Mm -hmm. If you are playing a game which has a, a lot of high-speed reactions then a mouse that has you know a higher resolution for you know you move it a little bit it moves a lot can be useful especially if you once you've learned how to practice and control it and the games where you where you have a lot of options so having a lot of extra buttons on your mouse it does provide an advantage in those i used to use one of those uh, mice that had uh, nine extra buttons on the side of the mouse for playing world of warcraft just because it was easier for me to map certain things to that mouse and control that one. Yeah, and, th and that is... And then it broke and I couldn't buy another one. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I use a gaming mouse, but not for gaming. It comes... Gaming mice, because they have... Uh, gaming mice are normally designed to have much better tracking resolution, much uh, finer lasers. They're able to move more dots per inch and yeah. perceive better. Because of that, they are remarkably good for video editing and Photoshop and other stuff like that, where you need to be able to have a little bit more precision in, in how you're moving stuff around on screen. They are fantastic for those things. Yeah. And even better, I have... And one of the other things, with all the extra buttons, you can map certain macros. If you're doing, say, programming, you could map certain things to those buttons. So you're sitting there going... I use this function all the time. I'm just going to map it to here. Control V, Control C, Control X. They are all mapped to my mouse. See, because there you go. yeah, it, and that that is that for me. In terms of gaming, I have never really seen uh, an advantage to using a gaming mouse because I probably haven't played those sorts of games. I know a lot of Call of Duty type players and FPS players swear by them. So, yeah, but also, don't go crazy. You yeah. don't need to be spending $150 on a mouse. Uh, uh, I mean, unless, one, you have that much disposable income and you just like how it looks. Hmm. Or, you know, it, make, make sure it has the features you can use. Now, as far as uh, mechanical keyboards go, there are a lot of people, myself included, who like the clicking sound <laughs> of a mechanical keyboard Not just the just feels right. Not just the also, sound, also the tactile the t it, feedback of it. Mechanical yeah. keyboards, for someone who types as much as I do, a mechanical keyboard apparently has a, a lot better response to things like not causing carpal tunnel syndrome than other keyboards. What we're talking about when we say mechanical keyboard is... There are two types. There's one where, when we say mechanical, it means there's a physical switch that clicks that actually makes the uh, connection and transmits the data. When you pr hit press A, the switch goes down, it clicks, it tells the keyboard, 
this is A, and the keyboard tells the computer, A, and the computer goes, A. So there you go. Um, I, I, I don't know if you can hear it, but. Yeah. Mechanical keyboard, not the loudest keyboard I've owned, mind you. The other type is an electrical switch or digital switch, which isn't really a switch at all. It, it, well, in terms, in technical terms, it is, but it's it's a little contact you make with the keyboard. It's it's not an on off clicky. It's just a little contact you push against the circuit board, and, and there's it, a little spring in there to push the key back up. Is all yeah, it's in. that's it. You're you're just touching a, a a connection on a key on a circuit pad. Instead of actually having a switch that's going on and off, you're physically just push and it's it doesn't the, the terms of reaction speed for games it's been measured but it's tiny it yeah. really is um yeah, the, the advantage to i i would say more to the mechanic because more and more of the mechanic keyboards are in the realms of gaming you go to you go to your fries or your best buy or your new egg mm -hmm. and the mechanical keyboards are often under the gaming section yeah the advantage there again is programmability or um customization you can do yeah. where you can go i i'm running this game let me load up that profile on my on my software that came with the keyboard and now i'm set to run that game on my keyboard in the configuration i want so there's that advantage there which yeah i i sort of do that a little bit for for warcraft as well in general however unless you are really obsessive about it you're not going to see a big difference in it's not going to win the game for you yeah now the, the exception i will say to that is if you are and i don't know yet the actress if you're a professional gamer and there are professional there gamers, are esports yeah esports then there is a difference sometimes it's psychological where the guy has gotten so used to that model keyboard and that model mouse, mm -hmm. nothing else feels right, and it throws him so off, yeah. or her, so off their game that they don't do as well with something else. It's 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 a it's a preference, really, yeah. and it's a valid. You know, it's it's as valid as between a, a Stratocaster and a Gibson. Uh, you know, yes, it's it's a valid. You know, what feels right to you, what feels comfortable to you what you like. I just, I can't honestly say one is going to work any better than the other. You're, you're paying for comfort in there. Also, yeah. mechanical yeah. keyboards are easier to disassemble, so they're easier to clean. Yeah, uh, and there are, there are brands out there that are better than others. I yeah. Mean, if, you know, uh, Razer makes very good, low pricier uh, keyboards and mice than a lot of companies, but there's other uh, other names out there as well. I don't know any off the top of my head, primarily because what I have here is a Razer keyboard and a Razer mouse. Um, and the reason I got them is not inherently because of the gaming functionalities, it's because they got lots of pretty lights. But the mechanical switches are easier to clean because they're, you can actually pop the keys off. They're designed to be able to pop the keys off so you can clean underneath them. Yeah, The electric switches... If you pop a key off one of those, it is a pain in the ass to get it back on. Yeah, and part of the reason for that, because it's got a, it's, it's a spring, it's basically a spring latch system. So the keyboard, yeah. the, the key basically clips into sort of a socket and spring holds it up, and you push it down, makes the contact. You pry that off, you might have broken the clip that was holding it in. Yeah. Which is not necessarily a problem unless that spring is a little bit stronger, in which case that key is now riding higher because there's no clip holding it in place. Um, let's see. Let's do Simon's here because this is kind of interesting. Um, hello, Nash, Mike, and Grady. I have a puzzle for you. I'm trying to live stream an older PC game to either YouTube or Twitch. One must fall Battlegrounds. I can't get this game to work on any modern hardware. As far as I can figure, with some dedicated fans on long dead forums, uh, some big fundamental update late into Vista's life cycle broke the game for any operating system after that. I work on basic Vista, but once Vista is updated, the game broke. Uh, I can install the game on newer systems. Uh, I can even manually patch it to its latest version, but the game never actually starts. I now have a new old refurbished Dell Latitude D630. Ah, I had one of those. 
that can run the game. Th th those are very popular on eBay if you look for them because companies bought droves of them. Oh yeah, we w when we did a tech refresh on, on the command, we access, well, we didn't access, we turned them back over to NMCI who um, yanked all the hard drives and shredded yeah. those and I don't know what they did with the pallets and pallets of computers, but we got rid of hundreds of them. Yeah, so there are tons of D630s out there. Uh, has Windows XP, operating system I know I can work. However, I can't find any streaming software that is compatible with XP. Streamed other games from my more advanced desktop computer. It's just this game I can't run. How can I stream this old game? Um, I think we talked about this kind of thing before, Nash. Yeah. What? Let me see if I get this right, because I know you know the answer. But let me see if I can remember. Hmm. You take the video output from the XP box, run it into a video capture device and then stream that yes that would be your most reliable there are a couple options here that would be your most reliable option uh what we're talking about is you take the video out from the d630 which i believe you're going to have to get a converter for that because i think it had, did that have i think it had dvi but i'm i'm not sure it might have just had vga i am reason okay i know it had vga that was a given. I I know you could get DVI video cards for it, mm -hmm. but beyond that, I don't remember. Yeah, it it you'll I have to still have one in a lab somewhere. Now you're going to have to get an adapter for this that will allow you to output not just the video but also the audio as well, because most streaming capture cards these days are HDMI. So you'll need to get an adapter for whatever video output is on that laptop as well, and make sure that adapter that goes from VGA to HDMI or DVI to HDMI includes audio. Uh, yeah, it'll probably be just a little um, 3.5 millimeter. Yeah, yeah, that'll go from the speaker output on the laptop over to the adapter. So make sure you do that. And then put a cap get a capture card for your computer, either USB or PCIe. And you'll be able to capture it as a new video source, and you'll be able to play it on on a stream. That's and I and I, and I do remember now the this, this is what my memory is telling me now. The D six thirty only had VGA out, but there was a docking station for it that had the DVI. VGA will work too. They do make VGA to HDMI adapters. Yeah, I have and, seen and, those. Yeah. And and the, and I think the be better reason to go to that way rather than to say a docking station is because you will still have access to the sound ports. I think that way, mm -hmm. which you might not with the docking station. I don't remember where the sound ports yeah. are on that. Um, now your next best option, if that sounds like a big hassle, is you could use a virtual machine. Um, that would be like a VMware. Don't they have a freeware version? I believe so. I... Yeah. That is a virtual machine is where you make you run a, comp a program that allows you to make a computer inside your computer. It sections off parts of your system and pretends like it's a different computer. And you can install any operating system you like on there. Windows 95, XP, Linux, uh, even if some very creative people are able to do Mac OS that way. Um, it's not legal, but you can do it. A virtual machine is a good way to do these games. Now, the reason I say it's not the most reliable is making a pretend computer inside your computer can be tricky. Sometimes it doesn't behave quite the way that the operating system you've installed on it wants it to. Say you put Windows XP on your virtual machine, it may work more or less, but Windows XP might get a little confused because it's looking for certain things that were actually in a real computer that the virtual machine isn't able to provide it. Yeah, it isn't able to emulate properly. And there's also the issue you run into with virtual machines sometimes is you go, okay, I need to talk to this part of the outside world in this way. The virtual machine software doesn't provide that interface or it doesn't provide it in a way that both sides can talk to. For example, if you needed to have the virtual machine on the internet, maybe the virtual machine software you're using doesn't have a way for, say, Windows 98 or yeah. Windows 2000 or whatever you're doing uh, to go virtual machine, real machine to internet, 
and back. Yeah. So usually that, that, that's an example. So virtual machines, they are not, especially when it comes to old games, they are hit and miss. Since you already have the D630, I would hardly recommend going in a little bit more to get the capture card and the adapter for it. Because yeah. not only will you, and this is a good thing for you, not only will you be able to play this game, you'll be able to play a lot of older games. And I do know there are viewerships and there, there are people who want to watch those older games and there a lot of people can't do it because they don't invest in the hardware to be able to stream those games. You'll be able to. So you'll be able to carve out a niche for yourself. It might be good for you in the long term, not just for this game, but for other games you might want to stream. You could build an audience that way. So, yeah, I, I would. You, th those are the two options. I would go with the hardware route. You might want to try playing with the virtual machine. Maybe it will work, or maybe you'll end up banging your head into a wall over it. You just have to wait and see. It, it could be either way, but. That's why we say we've got guesses. Yeah. That, but my money is I, I, I like the hardware solution whenever possible over a software one because software is always. Hardware is a little easier for us to troubleshoot as well. I mean, yes, there could be a firmware issue inside that the black box that we can't do anything about. But at the, at the very least, we can go, well, we know we're getting video out. We can switch the TV up to it. Yeah. We're not getting video out of the box. So there's probably something wrong with the box. Let's try just a return first or something of that nature. Or let's try second video. Okay. This, you know, there's things you can do with hardware that you can't do quite as easily with software with troubleshoot. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it. We, we're out of time this week. Um, that's going to do it for us. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. If you have some, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, send your questions to requests at radiodeadair.com. We'll attempt to answer them. Be back on Monday for RDA. But in the meanwhile, uh, I am Nash, and this is Mike, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.